Hey Sun Space Sun, I'm Daisy Victoria and today we're going to make cut work sleeves. That's right, we're going to make some sleeves and then we're going to cut them up. Don't worry, it's for a specific pattern. I'm working on a 16th century Renaissance Loki costume and I am just determined to make it look amazing because Loki deserves an amazing dress. I'm going with late 16th century Venice for my historical Loki variant. And in this era, we see some pretty freaking amazing sleeves. A particular sleeve type that I happen to enjoy is a cutwork sleeve. We see cutwork sleeves in various forms on 16th century Venetian gowns. And I just knew immediately when I was gonna do a Venetian Loki that I could take this cutwork sleeve idea and I can put the Loki symbol in the cutwork sleeves. Yeah, that's right. I can take the actual Loki symbol like from Norse mythology and I can make that part of my cutwork sleeve design. So my goal is to make the sleeves look like just beautiful sleeves on their own. But if you know the Loki symbol, you'll see it in there. I'm doing 16th century Italian Loki specifically because in the 16th century in Venice, we see a horned hairstyle that I thought would be perfect for Loki because Loki has horns, duh. Now I already made a Loki collar, so if you missed that video, I will link it for you below, along with a playlist filled with all of the historical Loki variants that my colleagues and I are working on. Now, are these sleeves going to take a long time to make? Yes. Are they going to be worth it? Also, yes. So let's see what it takes to take regular boring sleeves and make them into crazy cutwork sleeves. I'm starting by creating a mock-up of the sleeves out of this scrap fabric I have because I really need to test it before I go full force into these crazy sleeves. I'm using a very standard basic fitted sleeve pattern. This is the same fitted sleeve that I include in my Renaissance dress PDF. It has a seam on the back of the arm, but you could really do this with any generic fitted sleeve pattern, to be honest. I'm gonna go through a couple of mock-ups where I adjust the height and the width of the sleeve, and we're eventually gonna conclude that the original sleeve pattern was actually the one that I like the best. But let's go ahead and see how I came to that conclusion. So I slashed the top of the sleeve to kind of see how this is gonna go. Um, I might slash a little bit lower down than this, actually, because you can see how that kind of bunches up. I think I'm going to add like an inch, maybe two, to the height of the sleeve to give this a little more like bunchy area. And I might make the sleeve a little bit wider, like to have slightly more volume. But overall the sleeve shape is good, obviously is my fitted sleeve pattern for a similar dress. I think that just a couple of little tweaks will make it perfect and I'm so glad I made this mock-up sleeve before cutting my silk because I do want to make the pattern a little bit larger, both in height and width. So it's definitely really wide. I like the additional height. I'm not sure about this width. I think we're going to slim it down a little bit actually. After sleeping on it and coming back to the sewing room, I've decided to go back to the original sleeve. And when I was thinking about it, as the sleeve is tied on and not set really high up, it's kind of like this, so I don't actually need the extra height on the sleeve to achieve what I want. So I think this sleeve will actually be perfect. <laughs> now um, what's a little bit nerve wracking is that I'm going to have to do a bunch of cutouts all over the sleeve. These are even slashes and I don't know yet how I feel about the anxiety regarding trying to get the fabric not to fray. I know it'll be fine in the end and it's going to look amazing. Now if you look at some of the cutwork sleeves that go with these gowns, they tend to have all different types of designs. You can have ones that are more geometric or more evenly spaced, ones that are just puffs, and you can have ones that are totally crazy. 
So I just wanted to get a really good idea of what these sleeves look like in general, because what I want to do is place the Loki symbol somewhere in there and then kind of make a bunch of different designs all around it that are inspired by the designs I see on these other sleeves. Next, I'm pulling up the Loki symbol. Loki is often represented by these two snakes that are intertwined. Now, rather than printing this off, I went ahead and traced it on my computer. Did you know that if you don't have a light box, actually, if you have a computer monitor, you do have a light box. Look at this. It's amazing. Once I had that traced, I basically simplified it a little bit and made it into the design that I thought would work for the cutwork sleeves. So I'm changing the lines a little bit just to make them something that I can cut out of a set of sleeves. Once the Loki serpent is ready, I can start actually decorating the sleeves. Now you'll see that at the top, I've sectioned off a portion for the upper slashes. That means that all the designs are gonna go on the rest of the sleeves. So I chose some places to put the Loki symbol actually a few times on the sleeve and then I filled in the rest of the area with just designs that I made up, taking inspiration from those period portraits. This portion of the process is all freehand. If you want to freehand your own project, you can totally go crazy here. Obviously, you can trace designs as much as you want to, and I really enjoyed doing the combination of the two. One last thing about the way I'm designing these sleeves is I'm leaving that sectioned off part at the top. I'm also leaving a sectioned off part at the bottom where I'm gonna put lace on the sleeves, and I'm leaving sectioned off pieces at the sides. That is actually my seam allowance where I'm gonna sew the sleeve together after I do the cutouts. To take this from a beautiful piece of pencil art to an actual pattern for sleeve cut work, I had to cut out all of those little pieces that I made. And I just did this with paper scissors. Now I would like to note here that you can make cutwork sleeves using a laser cutter. So if you wanna go all fancy schmancy, go for it. It would save you a heck of a lot of time. I could pretend like I did it by hand because it's a little closer to period, but really it's because I don't currently have access to a laser cutter. And instead of seeking out a laser cutter, I decided it wouldn't be too much trouble. It wouldn't be too hard or take really that long, right? To just go ahead and do it by hand here at the house. Oh man, what was I thinking? It definitely took a lot of effort, but it's totally worth it, I promise. So remember how I was worried about the fraying of the fabric? We're going to address that right now. I could simply cut the single layer of silk, but that is going to fray like freaking crazy. I know because of past experience, and I've done this before, <laughs> that I can actually prevent a lot of the fraying by stabilizing the fabric. So what I'm doing here is I'm using heat and bond, which is obviously a modern material. <laughs> heat and bond basically glues the fabric onto another piece of fabric. I use this a lot for cosplay appliques and stuff like that. So I'm ironing the heat and bond onto the sleeve pattern pieces. And then once that is ironed on, I can cut off the excess heat and bond, peel off the back layer and iron it onto another piece of fabric. And in my case, I'm using some black linen, which I just happen to have a little bit available. While this doesn't entirely prevent all fraying, it definitely takes the fraying down to a minimum. And in my opinion, I think that looks a lot like what we kind of see in some extant garments from period. There are many garments from the Elizabethan era that have some sort of slashing. And there are lots of different ways that you can go about this and get sort of a minimal amount of fraying, such as cutting it on the bias or the diagonal. These sleeves obviously have lots of cuts all over the place in all different directions. And the best way that I know how to deal with that at this time is by using heat and bond. I have also made cutwork sleeves before, 
And for those cutwork sleeves, I heat and bonded them directly onto a layer of white linen. So it pretty much entirely inhibited the fraying. I'm not doing that this time because I believe that these sleeves were actually just worn over the chemise or camicha and that the white you see behind them in the portraits is actually that undergarment sleeve. Now that the sleeve and the pattern are both prepared, it's time to transfer the pattern onto the sleeve. I'm using a colored pencil that contrasts the sleeve very well, and I am just tracing this whole pattern out by hand. This is really kind of a soothing, meditative process, and though it takes a long time, there's something to be said about that, and it's something I wouldn't get with a laser cutter. But to be honest, if I used a laser cutter, I could just do something else meditative, so take that as you will. To make the cuts, I'm using this little knife blade here, and I will be combining that with the use of little tiny snippy scissors. So basically, I am using that blade to get as good of a cutout as I can. And the initial cuts I did entirely using the blade actually, before figuring out that I could use the little snippy scissors to help me in the corners and such. So I'm slicing through the fabric where I have all those patterns traced out. The little snippy scissors are great because they kind of help you to get into the little corners. I also use them to trim off some of those little frayed pieces of fiber that kind of stick out sometimes. So basically the X-Acto knife got things cut out and then the tiny sharp scissors kind of just finessed each little cut out piece. It seems crazy to see how fast this goes in the video because when I was doing it, it felt like it took me ages. And in fact, I did it in portions. I did about half a sleeve at a time and put it down for a while and then came back to it until they were done. But yeah, watching it here, it looks like it's instantaneous. <laughs> Don't be fooled. It will take you a while and it'll be totally worth it. With the cutouts all done, and actually I did re-iron the pieces too, just to make sure that heat and bond had a good seal around all the edges of the cuts. Now it's time to attach the lace to the cuffs. I was able to do that with the sewing machine. You could sew it by hand if you want to. And I'm being really careful sewing it on because I do have a very thick stabilized fabric with heat and bond underneath it. So I'm just taking my time to make sure that the lace is sitting the way I want it. Oh, the sleeves are magically tubes. That's because I sewed the long seam of the sleeves off camera. I also hemmed the lower edge of the sleeve by simply folding it under and stitching it by machine. So here we're going to bind the upper edge of the sleeves. You could actually do this by hemming the sleeves. The problem is that with the reinforced heat and bond, it's very difficult to hem it. So I'm using a binding made of that same fabric as the sleeves. Now you could use bias tape as well. This is cut on the straight grain and I just made a tube that was the same size as the sleeves. A lot of binding you see in historical garments is cut on the straight grain, and though it doesn't sort of sit as smoothly around the edge as bias tape would, I feel like it has that little historic extra detail that if you know, you know, and it's something that just makes me happy and it's easy to do, so I like to go for it. For that binding, I just sew it onto the top edge of the sleeve and then fold it over twice and secure it onto the back side. Side. 
Next, I am decorating these cute little gold buttons here with green rhinestones that match my dress. And we're gonna use those to secure the sleeves onto the dress. You can definitely secure the sleeves with just ties, which I've done in the past before. This time I wanted to do something a little bit different and I thought these buttons would be super cute. I sewed these buttons onto the sleeves, evenly spaced apart. I did not sew them all the way around, so I skipped the very underarm part of the sleeve. And then I'm making loops to match the buttons on the bodice of the dress. So these are just little pieces of satin ribbon and I'm hand stitching them onto the lining of the bodice where it will match the buttons on the sleeves. If I were to do this using just ties like I've done in the past, I would either stitch ribbon directly onto the bodice and the sleeve, so no button, just ribbon, or I would stitch little loops onto the bodice and onto the sleeves. I like to use little metal loops, D-rings or O-rings, make sure they're sealed, and then I would be able to pass a ribbon through those to tie them on. So any of those options are totally acceptable. Here we are doing the buttons with satin ribbon loops. I did make my loops rather tight for these buttons. I did that because I didn't want them to come undone while I'm wearing it, but in retrospect, I would have made them a little bit wider so that it would be a little bit easier to button them. It's okay, it's just a little bit finicky. I like to button these on before I put the dress on because it's way easier, but I'm also gonna show you what it looks like if you add the sleeves after the dress is on. So here you can see the sleeve going on over the camicha or chemise, and then I'm just buttoning those buttons into the little loops. In my opinion, it's much easier to put the sleeves on after the dress is on if you just have ties. And while I love these buttons and I think they're super cute, I probably would only do this on my court gowns, which this obviously is a very fancy court gown, because when I'm wearing my everyday dresses that I just kind of run around in, I like to be able to more easily access things once I'm wearing it. But if I'm a fancy court lady, I can rely on my servants to button my sleeves on for me, right? Um, I'm the only one here, so it would appear I am my own servant. Have I been working on the rest of the dress this whole time? Obviously, yes, I have, but I decided to make the sleeves a separate video because I feel like this is a separate topic and it could help you whether you're making a dress like this or something entirely different. So I will have another installment on how to make the dress itself and then we will see it all come together. Coming up next is the dress itself, and I'm so excited to share that with you. As always, find me on all the social medias as Daisy Victoria. My website is daisyvictoria.com. Thank you so much to my patrons over on Patreon who help me so much to continue creating content like this. I hope you guys have an absolutely amazing, magical day, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.